With Q2 of 2023 behind us, it's time to see what's happening in the Norwalk, Connecticut real estate market. Whether you're a buyer or a seller, I've got some valuable tips on market timing so you can make the best of what this market has to offer. So sit back, relax, and let's explore the Norwalk market. Hi, my name's Charlie Vinci. I'm a former construction business owner turned real estate agent, and my family's been in Connecticut's Gold Coast for five generations. Buyers, you'll keep from missing opportunities and avoid overpaying with my approach. Sellers, you'll net the most money with my experience flipping homes for a profit and by exposing your home to more buyers via this channel. Call me when you're ready to buy or sell. First up is the median sales price graph. In Norwalk for Q2, it was $570,000. This is higher than last year's median of roughly $535,000 and $100,000 higher than 2021's median of $470,000. Take a look at the five-year trend. Stanford is Norwalk's biggest competitor. What's interesting to me is that in the last two years, the median price in Norwalk has increased by $100,000, while in Stanford, it was only about $65,000. If you're planning to buy or sell, there's something interesting in the data that you'll likely want to know. Let me show you what I mean in the other graphs. Next, let's see how inventory is looking. In Q2 of 2023, we had only 1.7 months of supply in Norwalk. That means if we didn't get any new homes to sell, we'd only have enough inventory to meet buyer demand for another 1.7 months. This is a bit lower than last year's 2.3 months of supply and certainly lower than 2021's three months of supply. Take a look at the five-year trend. Another interesting thing is that I noticed Norwalk's inventory is declining faster than Stanford's as well. Looking closely at the graph, you're gonna notice that the end of Q2 is typically at or near the peak inventory for the year. But before I get ahead of myself, let's take a look at a few more graphs. This is the percentage of list price sellers were able to earn in Q2 in Norwalk. This year was 105%. As you can see, this is the highest this statistic has ever been in Norwalk. Last year, this number was 102.9%, and the year before, it was 100.8%. Considering the last two graphs, I guess it should be no surprise that Norwalk's median percentage of list price increased at a higher rate than Stanford as well. Stanford was always pricier. Could it be that Norwalk becomes more expensive? Their median's only about $20,000 apart right now. Do you think Norwalk's worth more than Stanford? Tell me in the comments below. Notice how the peak and percentage of list price a seller earns tends to peak at or near the end of Q2. These sales already had their offer accepted. When you put an offer in in July and August, the percentage of list price the seller earns is typically lower, but that's not the end of the story. Next up, let's take a look at how many homes there were for sale at the end of this past quarter. When we ended Q2 of 23, we had 143 homes for sale in Norwalk. This is lower than last year, when we had 247 homes and well below the 2021 COVID market when we had a Q2 with 353 homes. Check out the five-year trend. Notice how Q2 is typically correlated with a peak number of homes for sale for that year. What the three previous graphs show you is a cyclical cycle that our market exhibits and whether you are a buyer or a seller, I'm gonna tell you how to take advantage of this cycle. If you're thinking of buying, you're at the point in the market where you typically have the largest selection of the year. You also have a decrease in demand as other buyers and their agents go away for vacation or they're just distracted with summer activities. Stay on top of your listing notifications, not just for new listings, but for price reductions and re-explore older listings to find your diamond in the rough. You have an opportunity in front of you for the months of July and August to find a great deal with less competition. Notice I didn't say no competition, so stay diligent and you're likely to find your prize. Sellers, putting your listing on in July or August means that you could do better if you can wait until more buyers come back to the market in September. If you can wait, and I know that sometimes you can, but if you can, spend the time this summer getting your home ready, and I recommend putting it on the market just after Labor Day when there are more buyers in the market. Let's take a look at the closed sales in Norwalk. In Q2 of 2023, we had 246 sales. Last year, we had 306 closed sales, and in 2021, there were 374 sales in Q2. Take a look at the five-year trend. Using 2018 and 2019 as a more stable market to bench this year's sales against, I'd like to see more sales. 
but I have no doubt that the sales are being held back by the limited supply. Next, let's take a look at how many pending sales there were at the end of Q2 in Norwalk. As you can see, we ended last quarter with 262 pending sales. Last year, this was 337, and the year before, it was 417. The pending sales are a great indicator of where the market's heading. Take a look at the five-year trend. While I'd like to see more pendings in Norwalk, 262 seems good considering how little there is to choose from. In Norwalk, it took the median seller about 18 days to sell their home in Q2. This fast pace has been consistent since last year when the median was 24 days. Back in 2021, it took the median seller 33 days to find a buyer. Take a look at the five-year trend. Frankly, considering it takes time to show a house, accept an offer, and write a contract, I'm not sure the median days on market can get much lower. If you're thinking about buying or selling in Norwalk, call me. Wait, I have one more option for you. If you're on your computer or watching on TV, whip out your phone and scan this QR code. It will bring you right to the page on our site related to the video.